The great thing about my job is I get out and about all over the British Isles visiting fascinating places that put a smile on my face and I always feel privileged to witness some of the things that I see, which most people rarely get a chance to. And today, I'm doing just that. Here on this disused airfield, just outside Swindon in Wiltshire, the Science Museum houses all its oversized objects in six huge great big aircraft hangars, just like this one. And the collection ranges from sock darning machines to the first ever hovercraft, from nuclear missiles to the Blue Peter lifeboat. And each item comes with its own unique story. Peter Turvey. Hello. Pleasure to meet you. You're the head curator here. Yes, that's it. So you're the exact person to tell me how many items does this place house? Yes, we've got about 18,000 museum Gosh. objects here at Science Museum Swindon. Wow, and you're responsible for all of them? Well, our collections care team is responsible for looking after them and making sure they're safe and well looked after. What about the history of this place, though, prior to when you got hold of it? Well, this actually was a World War II airfield. It was a maintenance unit, number 15 maintenance unit. All the buildings here were built just before the outbreak of the Second World War. So mm. This site was in use by the RAF until the late 1970s and then we gradually took it over for museum storage. Yeah. And do you have a particular favourite here? Well, it's difficult because I mean, I've got so many things to look at. I've got lots of different favourites depending on what day it is in the week. But I think my favourite at the moment is our 19.3 Garden Circle A steam car. <laughs> so maybe we'll have a look at that a bit yes. later. What I'd like to see though is something, let's say, quite iconic, something that may be the oldest item here or the largest or the heaviest. What have you got to show Well, me? we have a look at our Fleet Street printing press, which is the heaviest object we've got at okay. 140 tonnes. <laughs> OK, is it this way? It is just down here. Oh, after you. Well, where is it then, Peter? <laughs> no, I was being a bit cheeky because I know we've just walked through it or, let's say, underneath it. That is colossal. Yes, an impressive piece of machinery. It's as big as a house, isn't it? Yes, and actually we've only got a third of it here. It was bigger. Wow, yeah. gosh! <laughs> Obviously you, you had to assemble it here. It came yes. in bits. Yes, it came in, as, in pieces from North Cliff House and Fleet Street and the team of skilled engineers put about nine weeks putting it together here. What date is that and when it, was it decommissioned? It dates from about 1930 and it was in use printing the Daily Mail and the Evening News until about 1989. Incredible! Do you know roughly how it worked? <laughs> yeah, basically it's quite simple. See that big roll of newsprint there? Yeah. Well that actually is fed up through the machine up to all those rollers. Some of the rollers actually have the typeface for printing the newspaper. Some actually carry ink onto the typeface and then it shoots all the way up into that bedstead contraption at the yeah, top and then know. is folded and turned into bits of newspapers which actually shot off elsewhere into the building. You could say that is a Fleet Street heavyweight, couldn't you? Oh, it know? really is. <laughs> Keeps you fit walking around, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. We've got a big site here. <laughs> it's like one big giant attic and everything's yes. sort of at a juxtaposition. It's quite interesting. Yes, you've got, I can just see you've got the snowcat here next to an old bus. Yes, so everything's organised according to size and weight. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the snowcat. Oh, well, this is really one of our star objects. It's got an amazing history with it. It was one of four sent to Antarctica in 1957 for a British expedition that was the first motorised crossing of Antarctica. They set off in late 1957 and got to the other side in early 1958. It's a very important scientific expedition. Some of the research they did is very relevant today because one of the things they did was measure the thickness of the Antarctic ice sheet. That so we actually it. can see how global warming has Incredible. affected the ice sheet since then. I can see how it works now. It's mm. got like four pontoons as wheels, isn't it? With yeah. tracks on it. Yeah, I mean, they were developed in America for actually servicing telephone lines, so they actually spread the weight so they could actually go over snow fields. Yeah. Fascinating machines. It must, it must be a, a big headache for conservation because obviously you've got to look at these things once they're in here and make sure they're not rusting any further and bits are falling off. Yes, we've got a specialist team of conservators who look after our objects. So if you go over to our conservation laboratory, you can meet Dennis, who Dennis, is right. one of our conservators. <laughs> Oh, 
Hi, Dennis. Hello. Hi. I've been walking around the hangars with Peter and he's been showing me around and um, mm -hmm. I just want to find out a bit more about conservation. Where do you start? What do you pick on? Well, we're usually getting objects ready for display down at uh, the Science Museum in London. Right. So we don't do any repairs. No. Conservation's not it's about totally making it's it not work. restoration. No. Yes, that's right. This is a computer, isn't it? Actually, this is Ernie One. Oh, he, he picked the premium bond numbers. Yeah, that's right. That's right, back in the 1950s. The acronym Ernie stands for Electronic Random Number Indicator Equipment. From 1957 to 1972, Ernie 1 produced thousands upon thousands of winning numbers for the premium bonds. Today, Ernie 4 does the job, and Ernie 1 has been saved as a museum piece. So what basically are you doing? I see you using traditional methods and techniques. It's like you're restoring a little bit of fine art on, 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 oh, on a canvas. Oh, absolutely. Art conservators use saliva to clean objects. And we found that saliva, the enzymes in saliva, are one of the most effective ways of cleaning it. Not all your saliva, though. No. Yes, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The, <laughs> I, have to whole... think, I have to think about lemons a lot. Seriously? Yes, yes. But they work on a canvas, let's say, this size. Now, your canvas <laughs> is, well, <laughs> you're going to be here for months. Yeah, it's quite a bit bigger. I'm not doing all the surfaces, oh, right, mostly okay. the plastic surfaces. Just the plastic. Yeah. How long will this take? Well, we've uh, booked in six months to do it, and that's going to be pushing it. God. Well, Dennis, I can't shake your hand to say thank you, but I know you've got your work cut out, so I'm going to let you get on with it. Well, right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. The Science Museum here at Rawton is such a fascinating place, but it's only open to the general public on certain days of the year. So do keep an eye open because there's plenty to see here and they are preserving your heritage.